What's up, everybody? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we are talking about engine braces. Now, if you're into modifying GTRs, you either have or know someone that's cracked a block. I've cracked mine, and it's considered pretty normal to crack an RB26 block between cylinder number three and four above the turbo oil feed, as that is the weakest part of the block. Now, it starts at over 600 wheel horsepower, and some sooner than others. Now, on the RB26, they have a diff attached to the engine, and all of those big launches in a GTR puts extra twisting force on the block which is why you don't see 26s in two-wheel drive mode crack all that often or even crack at all. Now, how can you stop the block from cracking? Now, some people like to grout fill the block, but really all that does is stop the bores from expanding and stops the splitting of the bores, but it doesn't stop block twist. Now, if you want to stop the block from twisting, you need to either brace or reinforce the block somehow. And one company that's done a whole bunch of research and development over the last decade on RB blocks twisting is Platinum Racing Products. So we caught up with Herman to talk about bracing an engine. So the very first RB30 I was asked to build was a rebuild job. And I was given this engine that had been running for years, it was fine, and it had this um, four-wheel drive adapter. And it was hideous. I just didn't want to put it on the engine, so I thought I've got to be able to come up with something better. I spoke to my client at the time, he said, well, that's all you can get. Um, and I thought, well, I think we can do better. We can incorporate the, the original main cap brace here, and uh, there's got to be a way to tie in the pan rails to the original OEM main cap brace. That's, that's got to help. So anyway, I prototyped a couple of braces, made one out of steel by hand, TIG welded it all up, and it looked like a very primitive version of this. Um, so we didn't fit that to an engine, obviously. We made the alloy billet version, and I thought, well, well, we'll stop the main cap cradle walking, and that should tie in the pan rails. We can still now bolt our four-wheel drive diff on there without all these ugly plates that go in on an ugly machine surface, and we had our first brace. So now it's evolved. This is revision 15. Now, just to um, settle a few disputes when it comes to my revisions, I come from a engineering document control background and any change whatsoever, doesn't matter how minuscule, it, it, you get a new revision number. That way you get document and item control through, through the range and someone can call up and say, I've got this particular issue. What brace have you got? Rev 7? Okay, this is what we did. That's, I'm familiar with it now. We can give you support. Changing the pitch on a thread would be a revision. Changing the, the position of a dipstick would be a revision. Going now to an O-ring sealing surface around the bottom, that's a different revision. So yeah, we've changed it, we've improved it, we've evolved it 15 times, and we'll probably keep evolving it. Every batch I get, can we make it any better? Can we change a certain size of a hole? Is a countersinking not working? Something's gotta be wrong. I can make this better. So not that there's 15 problems with it, we've just made it better 15 times somehow. So initially, we started off making this as an adapter for the four-wheel drive diff. Uh, four-wheel drive sump assembly on the RB26, obviously, to make the RB30 a four-wheel drive. And after we pulled down a few engines that would cook bearings, we realised that the main bearings were actually hanging in there. And we thought, well, maybe we've stopped the block twist. The brace was a lot thinner back in the early versions. So, well, why don't we beef that up? The brace was actually preventing the block from cracking. So there was a whole adapter, but also engine brace that we started developing. Then we moved on to the RB26. They crack, 500 kilowatts, you crack a block. But uh, we stopped breaking blocks. And then we thought, oh, hang on, there's merit in this. So we've evolved that and done quite a lot of twist testing and there's a lot of background into why it is what it is now. But incorporating the, the main cap support to stop that main cap walking, it, uh, stops premature bearing wear uh, and now we've locked in the pan rails and given it some rigidity which has really helped the RBs in general. Uh, a couple of examples, I've broken blocks at 500 kilowatts testing, um, the Motive 32 GDR also cracked it I think 500 kilowatts, countless examples I've been testing blocks and going through 
this, this particular scenario for 10 years now, so I've seen it more than enough times to be dead set sure. Cars and engines that have not broken with our block brace, I mean, there's, there might be a couple of blocks that have still cracked somewhere, no one's brought them to my attention. I'm pretty certain that uh, there isn't many. JMA ran an eight second pass with an RB26, hasn't broken a block. I've pushed RB25 and 26 blocks over a thousand horsepower. I still have not managed to crack a block. I've tried to crack a block. Block twist is what's going to crack the outside of the block. Splitting a bore is something completely different. If you have a thin wall in your cylinder bore, you will be more prone to splitting a bore. They're two different things. The block brace may help somewhat, but it's not going to completely avoid you splitting a bore. There's other techniques to get around that. Grout fill the bottom half of the engine. If you can go on sonic test, your bore and make sure there's enough material in there. Hardness comes into it quite a lot. If you have a soft bore, it's going to balloon, it's going to work hard and it's going to split because of all that movement. So first of all, you want to have a thick bore above three millimeters everywhere. You want to have a hard block. The harder the block, the less ballooning and movement you're going to get in, in expansion and contraction of that bore. So you're, you're much better off, you're less prone to cracking a bore if you cover those bases. So there's predominantly two different block types that Nissan manufactured. The two-wheel drive version, RB20, 25s uh, and RB30s are all the same. They have an oil gallery right in the middle of the block. So if you're running a dry sump setup with no dry shaft uh, in, in the middle, you can run a, a dry sump brace, which is this one. If it's going to be four-wheel drive, it has to be either a dry sump brace because the drive shaft's in the way, or you go to our wet sump brace which has got oil piping gallery through it, uh, which allows you to run a dash 12 port fitting for an oil pickup where it should be over the side there, over in the front of the engine. All our braces need some machine work done on the block, whether it's two or four wheel drive. I'll start off with the two wheel drive. The pan rail, where you usually have an M6 bolt hole, you have to drill that out M8 by 125, the whole way around. Then we insert all these new holes in the middle of the brace, and that's what allows the center of the brace to attach to the main cap cradle. So that happens on all blocks regardless. If it's an RB30 and you want to go four wheel drive, for example, you need to cut out some holes around the sides for bolts to come through for the diff. Basically, they're, they've got threads in them around the outside here that allows you to bolt the diff on and the five bolts on the one side and two on the other, RB26 sump, I'm sure you're all aware, those then have through holes through to the other side of the block and we've got special block adapters that allow you to clamp and sandwich that plate in. The RB26 is a different beast. It has a much bigger pan rail, uh, obviously because the original sump bolts onto it. So there's an extra row of bolts the whole way around. That pan rail is twice as thick and our brace basically has through holes all the way through and you bolt your normal four wheel drive pan on and the bolts go straight through it and effectively sandwich the plate. So we've had some really big cars run our block brace for years. War GDR, it's all over the internet at the moment, it's killing it, uh, that runs our brace. Uh, Jun 2, that's one of the quickest cars in the world, coming second at the moment, it'll probably come first and then second again as that, as that war continues. That car has not physically cracked a block to this day. It's been running our brace since the very beginning of Jun 2. Does the brace work? Absolutely. Uh, there's, well, I don't know how many hundreds of braces we've got out in the market. Uh, obviously, we've proven that it works. Competing against the billet main cap idea, we thought, all right, well, people don't just want a billet brace, they want a billet main cap. So we started looking into a billet main cap. Independent main caps completely detracts from the whole direction of our bracing. Uh, you're, you're removing a, a modular one-piece system and you're putting floating caps in, trying to tie them out in and, and dowel them. Uh, you're not stopping the block twist. It, it's, it's completely the opposite of where we need to go. So we figure, let's do a whole billet girdle. Now this is our alloy version. It's not going to be released for a little while we're testing. We're about to release the steel version. But what we've done is effectively made a billet main cap set and tied it into the whole brace. People are asking us which brace to go for. This particular brace on the RB30 has been proven in Juntu, for example. It works. It's never cracked a main cap cradle. The big integrated main cap brace, uh, I, I, it is complete overkill, but for the people that want to go stupid on their builds, we're happy to support it and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do our, our best to make it happen for you.